Hello, welcome to a new video. This charger has been out for a while and I'm finally getting around to checking it out. The CMF by Nothing 65 watt GAN charger is on the bill today. I was planning to do a whole 65 roundup, but I ran out of time. This charger comes in interesting packaging. It has simple marketing, but does mention a few claims on the packaging. Although nothing, chirp, chirp, I'm too cheap to pay for cricket sound effects. You get it, nothing too special. It's a 65 watt charger. So my expectations are that it is essentially exactly the same as every other 65 watt charger on the market. I'll be checking out the usual things like efficiency, USB negotiation, idle power consumption, thermals, and more. So stay tuned for nothing. There's affiliate links which earn me a couple percent but cost you nothing in the description, as well as links for more information. Many thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. The detailed data is on Patreon. CMF by Nothing is a 65 watt 3 port USB charger. 65 watts does seem to be one of the most popular categories of chargers. This charger is one that was requested for a while, so it's finally here. The packaging is different. We'll talk more about it later, but six in the recyclable means polystyrene, I think, so this is not easily recyclable. The adapter does come with the user manual, and I actually find it to be quite helpful compared with what most supply. The manual gives a nice infographic that shows what happens with more devices plugged in and how the charging distributes. Why is this so hard and why can't more people do this? It does have some claims of energy efficiency and this is something that will certainly be getting checked out later on. The adapter itself does seem a bit large for the power level, but hopefully they optimize performance and thermals with that little bit of extra space. As usual, a safety listing is expected and present on this device, and it shows up on the SGS website, which is great. This generally means that it meets requirements for fault conditions, materials, and components that make it a lower risk product to use. The USB-C port can do a bunch of modes, including the 12 volt mode, which is always a nice bonus feature. The PPS or programmable power supply mode is available in two flavors. This allows the device to pick the power supply voltage for potentially more efficient charging. This has 11 and 20 volt modes. The current limit decreases with each level. The charger, once plugged in, has a reasonable idle power consumption. For a multi-port adapter specifically, it's not bad. Once taking it up to its full power level, I can do a quick calculation of the efficiency by dividing the power out by the power in, and it's not amazing. That's a disappointment. It was going well, oh well, this isn't the one. Nothing to see here. Continuing the trend, the USB negotiation on this device does not evenly share, and it negotiates really slow, like really slow, like several seconds to decide what to do next. It does this on both plug-ins and unplugs of any USB cables. It operated as a one port device, it's fine, but using multiple ports presents some problems. The next thing I noticed with this adapter is it makes noise. It makes kind of a lot of noise. My test area is not exactly quiet with all this test gear and the fans that go with that, and this was easily audible. I'm not sure how good the microphone will pick this up, but I'll give an example of it delivering power and not delivering power. Okay, onto the performance of this charger. The CMF by Nothing, again, lives up to the expectations of a 65 watt charger, which you all know I have nothing to say about. It performs slightly worse than most in some ways and okay in others. The voltages were always under the nominal value, but not too far. The ripple voltage on the output did continuously climb with additional load, and some odd behavior was seen here in when the adapter gets hotter, this value climbs. The efficiency is where this starts to fall apart a bit. In general, the competition is pretty well into the 90s of percent efficiency here, and this is a solid few percentage points behind the better adapters. All AC power adapters have to have separation or isolation between the mains and the DC side of the power adapter. The separation is important so you don't get shocked. This is measured as leakage current. The lower the leakage current, the better the adapter performs. In practical terms, this is that tingling feeling you get when using your laptop or phone with certain adapters. In terms of isolation, this adapter is good. Okay, thermal time. It's a 65 watt adapter. In general, what I have seen is some adapters make it and some don't in this category. Well, this is one of the adapters that actually makes a claim that it will stay on. Of course, they don't really state the conditions in which that is true, and I'm certain that even at 40 degrees C, there is airflow involved. But in my janky unofficial test setup, one hour is my target, and this did that. It did get very hot in the process, but it's still running. 
The only oddity I noticed is the ripple voltage continuously rose the whole time it got warmer. Some odd thermal behavior. It was over half a volt by the time I stopped the test. After cool down, totally back to normal. The typical thing with adapters like this with the higher thermals is how long is it going to last. I analyzed this in another video, linked in down below. Time to do some comparisons. I picked a bunch of different chargers and I didn't try too hard. Just stuff that I had quick data access to mostly. Anchor, of course, gets at least one spot, just for the popularity. But there are several other options out there. It's unreasonable to compare them all in a video like this. In terms of the weight, this adapter is fine. It's about the same as some peers and a bit heavier than others. Just from a logistics point of view, the packaging is now getting a target. It's three times the weight of typical packaging and it's large. That means less units per container, which means it's gonna cost more for the same performance. Anyway, weight density wise, it's pretty average. It's interesting that the Apple is a bit larger and heavier, but it actually translates that into performance, which is next. In terms of the idle performance, it's meeting its claim. For the multi-port versions, it's actually pretty good here. You could have three of the Apple adapters though, and still be less. The Apple is very good though. I'd like to see a multi-port adapter can get that number a bit lower. The plot doesn't show anything too different here. It's about in the middle. If I added a lot more, it still looks pretty good. This is everything in one chart. In terms of the average performance, these adapters average efficiency, specifically looking at the DOE6 efficiency, that means 25 to 100% load efficiency is meeting the requirement. It's not great here though, it does represent the lower value on the chart. I generally am looking for the higher efficiency, so I tend to pay more attention to this metric. And here it kind of falls a little short. In terms of the mega comparison, well, it's here on the chart. It is essentially placed identically to a lot of the Ugreen adapters. Okay, let's talk about value. This thing is smack dab in the middle of the pile. It's priced quite fairly, I think. It's not trying to be a bargain basement charger, and it's not trying to be a premium charger by being way overpriced. It has three ports. They all work mostly as advertised, and it does just what it says it can do. So for the price, it's not the worst thing I've seen. Packaging is expensive. I bet they could save dollars by getting rid of the many step clamshell and save money in shipping weight and density. Do you think this is the kind of company that may pass some of that savings on to the user? Conclusion time. This charger feels like it's old, but it's functional and it meets all of its claims. But it's really that those claims are not that great. This is fully opinion time, so you can fully disagree that this may be the best charger you've ever used. Efficiency wise, there are tons of better options out there. This charger allows itself to run hot to say it can stay on all the time. As the temperature it allows, there will be certain situations where it overheats. The thing saving it here is the larger case, which means it has more radiating surface area. The power negotiation is slow, slower than most other chargers I've looked at. Also, it is probably one of the loudest chargers I have tested. It's not apparent as coil wine, it's more of an AC hum or buzz. But on the positive side, it does work. It doesn't overclaim anything. The various modes all functioned as expected and the charger was able to hold up without shutting down. The thermals got hot, but no turn off. The idle power consumption was good for a charger like this. Isolation wise, it's a great option for a tingle free experience. The least a charger can do is at least be a charger. This demonstrates the least of what a charger needs to be. I don't have a problem with the size. The non-folding plugs should actually be more reliable too. I'm curious what else CMF and nothing can come up with in the future. But for me, this one isn't ready yet. Thanks for watching. There's links in the description. Goodbye.